Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rusty Beauties. How do you like my new poster on the garage wall? How about this one? Yeah, I can change them really fast because this is my new garage TV. <laughs> so I can put any poster there. Maybe I should change it to your ad here. <laughs> yep, if you pay enough, your logo can go there. <laughs> Anyways, just kidding. Yeah. Don't ask, just don't ask. <laughs> Remember I had a small TV up there that I couldn't see, I had to like go close to it. Now I can open wiring diagrams, menus and everything and read them from across the garage. <laughs> Anyways, that small TV, I kept saying that I want to replace it with a bigger one and uh, this is not quite what I was expecting <laughs> when I said a bigger one, but somebody gave it to me. It's free, so I couldn't resist. <laughs> to be honest, I tried to put it in my living room and take a smaller one, obviously smaller than this one, from my living room to put it here, but it doesn't fit in my living room. <laughs> There's no place in the living room where I can fit such a thing. It's 86 inches or 85 inches, something like that. Anyways, it is what it is. It came on the garage wall and I think it's gonna have a good use here. So the subject of today's video, the subject of today's video is a Triumph TR6 1973. I'm gonna show it to you later and it has some wiring issues. What a surprise. <laughs> TR6 with wiring issues? No way. Well, this one has uh, one of these custom wiring harnesses installed. Let me show you which one. So as you may know, the Triumph wiring harnesses are not great. They have issues. First of all, there are many circuits that are not fused at all. Other circuits with uh, big loads, like headlights, for example, they are run directly from the switch. There's no relay at all. There's relay for the horn. Sometimes there's a relay for the overdrive. And what else? There's one more relay. Can't remember right now. Anyways. Um, so Advanced Auto Wire uh, came up with this harness, which is a total improvement of the original wiring harness of the TR6. And for that matter, also, also they have wiring harnesses for TR2, TR3, 4, TR6, different years, and for MGB, different years. This is what it looks like. So it centralizes all the main electrical components, like uh, all the fuses. They added more fuses to all the circuits, of course. Uh, they added more relays, they moved also the two flasher units for the signals and for the hazards. They moved them also to this board, so now everything is centralized, which is great. And they send it with instructions. I have them printed, but here you can see them in color, so it comes with lots of instructions. And uh, somewhere in the menu, there's also a wiring diagram, like right here. There you go. So they have the wiring diagram, but unfortunately it's black and white. Even the printout here is black and white. And I'm surprised because um, Advanced Auto Wire are actually the guys who have wiring diagrams for all the TR2, 3, 4, and 6 in color, the original ones. Here, for example, this is for TR2 to TR4A. Look at that. They have beautiful wiring diagrams with colors. Even the tracers are on the wires are marked here. So you don't even need to read the small letters. You can just look at the diagram. Anyways, I'm surprised that they made these diagrams for the original harnesses, but when they built their own harness, they made the wiring diagram in black and white. But whatever, we're gonna have to familiarize ourselves with their diagram now and see what's happening in this car. Here I have a printout of the diagram from the installer. So whoever installed this wiring harness there, they didn't do a great job. They didn't follow exactly the schematic, I think, because there are some issues with the car. For example, the horn only works when the ignition is off. Anyways, when you turn the ignition on, the horn doesn't work. So, and other little issues. So we're gonna have to go through that and uh, fix it. Also, they left a mess under the dash. The wirings are like this, but actually, let me show you so you can see for yourself. So first of all, here's the car. 
and it is one of these projects that the son inherited it by the father. His father had it since 1980, I believe, uh, last year. Unfortunately, the father passed away and the son inherited it. So he took it to a shop where they've done a little bit of brake job and a little bit of different things mechanically so the car can run and drive better. And now he brought it to me actually to take a look at the harness and also to install some of these parts here. So he has a radio and speakers and uh, new rear springs that I'm going to have to install. He has the collars there and uh, all these air ducts under the dash, the door trim, the top of the door. These are, <laughs> you know, these are fun to install. I'm going to figure them out. Yeah, he has the clips too, which is great. And the uh, door gaskets. So that's what we need to do on the car. But let me show you a little bit more about the wiring harness. So here is where they installed the block. It's a great idea to put everything in one place, all of the fuses and relays and the two flushers here as well. Even has a fuse for, I believe that's for an amplifier. Yeah, so they did a good job here, but here not everything looks as great as in the engine bay, right? <laughs> So that's what they did here and now we're going to have to clean this up a little bit. The ammeter is taken out of the car uh, to be rebuilt so I think I have an ammeter for TR6 so we're going to bring it and put it here just temporarily so we can make sure that it works and that's it. Other than that the car looks great. There's, the interior is new, has a roll bar, new carpet, the seats look great. New door cards haven't been installed properly but um, I don't think we're gonna do that. I don't think the owner cares that much about it so he's not crazy about originality. Obviously if he installed this wiring harness he's more um, concerned about the safety of the car and the comfortability of course. So the fact that part of this is missing, I don't think he's, he cares too much about that. Like if he wants me, I can take these out and install them the proper way, pointing down and whatever, but that's uh, not my priority and I believe it's not his priority as well. So anyways, let me uh, familiarize myself a little bit with what's going on here under the dash and I'll bring you back. I just realized that this is actually a 73 car but it has those bumpers and it has also the, and, or it used to have emission system and everything. So it's uh, one of those hybrids between the early style, because for example, also look, the signal lights on top of the bumper, but it has the, uh, what are they called? Like the annoying things. Anyways, so, I went around and I tried to see if everything works and most of the stuff works likewise so as the owner told me one of the headlights is switched so there's always one in uh, high beam and one in low beam and when you flip the switch they just switch so that's easy to switch the wires on one of them we will see which one and on the back actually let me try again when I turn the lights on this one wasn't working and then I tapped it and it started working so <laughs> I guess it wasn't making a good contact which means we have to take care of them the problem is though that that's the second position of the switch the first position is when nothing works now we should still have this one working and the tail lights uh, this should be working still but it is not so so the first position of the switch does nothing even the dash lights don't work um, when we flip it the, on the second position now those dash lights work there but not on the speedometer and uh, the cometer when you turn on the ignition the the signals work but here nothing works here Oh, actually, 
I can see it flashing inside. So the, the bulb is somewhere there. The horn does not work in any position actually. Ignition, no ignition, doesn't work. The hazards work, even though this is not supposed to flash. This is like just a illumination. This is supposed to flash, but I don't know how they made it like that. But even if it is like that, doesn't really matter. Anyway, so it looks like only the horn is a problem and this switch needs to be wired properly and that's it. And then we have to make sure that that light there has a good contact always. Maybe we should clean it a little bit and put dielectric grease and stuff like that. And of course, make sure all the dash lights work because I saw some bulbs here hanging. I don't know where I saw them, but there were some bulbs that were hanging out oh, here, you see? So probably that's the illumination for the speedometer and tachometer. So yeah, it's not that complicated. Okay, that's an interesting discovery now. I took out the speedometer, which has the voltage stabilizer in the back. And uh, the fuel gauge is still working though, and it's showing full. I don't know how much that is, but it's probably not full. But the fuel gauge shouldn't show, even I checked the wiring harness, of course. I thought that they might have come up with something else instead of voltage stabilizer for this new power block. But no, nope, the voltage stabilizer is still involved and the water temperature and the fuel gauge are relying on the voltage stabilizer. Unless there's another voltage stabilizer somewhere, but I don't think so. Maybe inside the block over there. Let's go check. Nope, there's no voltage stabilizer here. So anyways, I think we're gonna have to check. Now we're gonna take the dash apart, of course, and we're gonna check uh, what's the voltage coming to the fuel gauge, because one side should be 10 volts, the other side should be ground through a resistor, which is the temperature sender. Oh, sorry, that's the fuel gauge, so the fuel sender is the resistor in this case. So we'll have to check that maybe with my uh, analog voltage voltmeter so we can see how many volts we supply to, to the two gauges. If it's 12 volts or 13 volts or whatever the battery voltage is, then this means that when they installed the harness, they didn't bother hooking it up through the voltage stabilizer. Look at that guy. He's zinc plating stuff without having absolutely no knowledge about it <laughs> anyway but this guy here has a little bit more knowledge so look what i discovered now so this is the power that comes for the fuel gauge so this is the fuel gauge this is the temperature gauge right so both of them have to be getting power from the voltage stabilizer which is stabilized to 10 volts apparently but look what's happening here so this wire goes around and hooks up to the temperature gauge so they're just breached the other wire that powers them up both apparently is this one right and look where it is hooked up to so they just took all the wires that are supposed to go to the back of the voltage stabilizer and put them together the two green ones that come from the harness are supposed to go to the b terminal of the voltage stabilizer and the green one that goes to the gauges now is supposed to be hooked up to the I terminal of the voltage stabilizer. The purple one is not even supposed to be there. I think they just tried to power up something with that and then they gave up and just left it there. And this is the other part that drives me crazy now. So here they have tightened it up nicely, the harness all the way to here. So that that's coming from that block and and there they just they were supposed to shorten it to the correct length but they just didn't so from here look that's where the wires come from from there now this comes all the way down just to go back to the back of the ignition switch same with the windshield wipers for example look they come from here the wires and look how long they are and of course, when you hook it up there, this wiring becomes like spaghetti. 
Uh, another one is the signal lights. So this comes from the engine bay. These are all the signal lights and everything. And then look, such a big loop just to hook up back to the switch. So this is the switch wiring. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten everything and like just to clean this up because all this spaghetti here drive me crazy. All right, it took me a while, but I managed to clean it up more or less. So I re rerouted some wires and uh, shortened some other wires and grouped them. So once everything is hooked up where it needs to go, then the wires can be tucked in and zip tight or whatever. But here, you remember it was a mess. All these wires were going one on top, one on the bottom. There were some wires coming from here, going all the way here making a loop and coming back so i shortened them and uh, took shortcuts instead of going through the entire dash underneath i rerouted everything to fit behind this cable and now it is like a harness finally and from here it separates into the different gauges and stuff so this is for the windshield wipers uh, signals headlights I think these are for, again, I have to check the schematic, but I think these are for the blower because they go inside the blower over there. But yeah, everything is much better organized now. And like I said, once everything is connected to where it's gonna go, these are just gonna go like that, maybe, and they're gonna be zip tight or up or whatever. Here, now I have to go up and start dealing with gauges. All right, a few hours later, and we're done here as well. I had to do some modifications because um, there were not enough uh, illumination lights here for the dash, for all the gauges. I changed the wire that was feeding the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge to a blue one because it's supposed to be light green, but I don't have light green one so i put blue and i'm gonna mark that on the schematic here we have the two illumination lights we have the signal lights and um, what was this that's the high beam one this one was not here for the illumination on the switch for the for the wipers and i run separate wires for the voltmeter here because there weren't any I couldn't find any. So I run new ones again from the green circuit. I figured from the schematic where it needs to hook up. So I hooked it up. It actually it, uh, runs with the same power from the voltage uh, stabilizer. And then I run the illumination for the gauge from here. I put it on the second terminal of the dimmer switch. So now i believe we have everything and everything works i tested it i just haven't tested the vo on the gauges with the voltage stabilizer but i believe everything's gonna be fine even hooked up the blower so it works only one stage works because the switch is actually broken you see between off and first stage it just goes it just shakes and does nothing so I let it run on the second stage only. But the wires are there behind. So if uh, the owner finds a new switch, he can just replace it and it's gonna work. And that's it, I guess. I'm gonna put it back together now. All right, it's the next day and look, I was going through the parts here again and I found that the voltmeter is actually back. So. I didn't realize that it was, okay, the gasket is almost gone, but that's fine. I didn't realize that it was actually rebuilt already. I thought from, from when I spoke to the owner, I thought that the voltmeter was out for rebuilding, but actually it is already rebuilt and it's back. So that's great. And I also found this wire. That's the correct wire for the fuel gauge and for the temperature gauge correct color so I now good thing I didn't go too far I just put this the dash there with two screws so I'm gonna take them out now 
I'm going to install the voltmeter as well, and we're going to replace that blue wire with the correct wire, so we don't even need to modify the diagram. And then, uh, yeah, we can finish assembling it in this case. That's great. All right, I think I solved the last two problems with the electrical. So you remember how the switch was not turning on the, the dash lights inside on the first position and there was no, and those marker lights or parking lights were not working on the side. Well, that was a simple fix. So the light and the wires on the back of the switch were not positioned properly. Now we have uh, off, we have we have the first position in which we have the solid markers on and we have the, I don't know if you see here, yeah. We have the dash lights on. And then in the second position, of course, these stay on. Right now they are on. And we have also the headlights. So I just need to go and switch the, I believe the right uh, headlight is reversed. The high beam and low beam, but that's something else. So that's solved now. And the other problem is the horn. It took me a long time to figure it out, but I did. It was the, the most obvious reason, but I didn't check it initially because I eliminated it as a reason because I'll explain to you why. Obviously, like usually when uh, your horn is not working, it's because you don't have ground. On the steering rack, you know how there's a boat. I don't want to, like I'm not going out now, but you know how there's a ground on top of the steering rack and that's for the horn. And usually that ground is missing or sometimes here on this... Uh, flexible joint sometimes the ground is not transferred from that shaft to this one i didn't check that because the horn is working so we have ground and i shook the steering wheel and then there was it was still working when the ignition is off but as soon as you turn the ignition on now the ignition is on not working anymore then the funny part is you turn the ignition off not working again you have to take the key out and now it's working. So because it's working in this position, I assume that I have ground and uh, I started looking into power troubles. And because I'm not familiar with this wiring harness, I went through the wiring diagram here and I followed wires. I figured out which one was the fuse, which one is the relay and turned out that I have power at all times. So only then, it occurred to me that I need to go and check for ground. And of course, when I came here, there was no ground. So now I am installing a new ground here. Like this harness doesn't provide a ground or they didn't run it, I don't know. But now I'm hooking up my own ground there. I'm gonna hook it up here to this boat. For whatever reason, the bonnet is also grounded. And I think, that might have been the ground that from here it was supposed to go there, but it's not long enough. I don't know. I always I already run a wire here, so I'm just gonna hook them up both here and that's gonna solve my problem. But yeah, it was tricky because somehow when the ignition is off and the key is out, actually, that's when somehow through the ignition switch, oh, I guess the pin yeah, I guess through the, now I figured it out. It's through the pin that uh, is for locking the steering wheel. That's how the, this part of the shaft gets ground. But when you turn the ignition on, this pin pulls back and it's not touching the steering column. Okay, now I figured it out. Anyways, it's always good when, when I find the explanation and the reason of the problem, not only when I solve it by mistake, you know? <laughs> Anyways, hey. Hi. No. Rusty, what do you want? You wanna go out? Yeah, we're gonna go out soon. Okay, so that's the last of the electrical problems, I believe, and only then I can assemble the dash, but actually, before we assemble the dash, we have to install all these new ducts. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna keep you here for that. I'm gonna show you um, some progress at some point, I guess.
All right, let's see now. Uh -huh. Still works. All right, problem solved. All right, we're kind of ready to put this assembly under the dash here. So I just wanted to show you what's going on here. So first of all, there's two types of hoses. One is one and a half inch, which is this one that goes to the vent up there, this vent on the dash. So the one and a half is the smaller diameter and comes out from here and goes up. I don't know if you can see it, but anyways, it's hooked up to this black thing over there right there and up there it doesn't require a clamp because it has like threads the hose is also like threads the way the wire goes inside there's wire that goes like this right it's just reverse threads so when you turn left that's when it tightens you have to remember that so that's the one and a half inch then there's this one which is one and three quarters inch diameter and it comes out of here, so you see this other um, vent, so it comes out of there. That's where this end connects, so it is like that. And then it splits in two. The short one goes to this vent from behind, and the other one is the footwell. So this one flips like that, and these two screws bolt right here on the dash. And then you have this vent warming up your feet, pointing that way. So just wanted to show you before I install it because it's gonna be um, a mess after that. I'm gonna show you when it is installed as well, but I wanted you to see how I assembled it in advance. All right, it's so tightened up, but it was a very tricky task. So you see this hose, it's hooked up there. There's this clamp here that's holding it in place as well, holding the hose up. I don't know if you see where it's held in the back with that nut. And here, okay, so you see how this thing comes almost vertical here, this splitter, and the top one goes to the vent on the dash outside, and the bottom one kind of wraps around here and comes underneath and comes here. If you do it the other way, if it goes up and then comes here, then it's gonna be in the way for your windshield wiper switch and for the light switch here. So this way it fits well. It's really hard, believe me, it's so hard, but it goes in. I hope that the other side is gonna be easier, but there we have the glove box, which is kind of tricky as well. We have to remove it, but we have to keep uh, room for it to go back right anyways this side is done so it looks great the wires are tucked in so the only wires that are hanging now here are the the ones that go to the gauges oh. okay here is the other side it's almost you can almost do it without removing the glove box except this hose which needs to which goes over there, but then the other end is shoved deep inside. So we need to remove the glove box for that one. But also here, it would be really tricky to work without removing it. So we're gonna remove the glove box. We're gonna replace this hose. Then we're gonna hook up this whole assembly here. We're gonna leave this side disconnected. And then we're gonna put the glove box and then we're gonna connect the last one over there. That's how it's gonna be. All right, that's better. Now we have access here to this hose and we have access even here and everywhere. And it's gonna be much easier. Hopefully this side is not gonna take as long as the other side. All right here, just wanted to show you how this is almost like threaded. So the spring, the spring, the hose can go on it. So you can see it. I'm trying to do it one-handed. I don't know if it is gonna work, but you see it is reverse thread. So 
you have to go to the left. Uh, it's hard to start it, but once it starts, you can keep going and that's why this one doesn't need a clamp. Okay, that's it. And now I can hook this one up for here. I need more than one hand for here. All right, it's all hooked up now. If this hose, everything here is hooked up. As on the other side, we have the footwell. The hose is tucked inside. Now, the only thing is, as some of you noticed, yes, this bracket was missing. But luckily, I found it in the boot earlier, so I knew it was there. So now we're just gonna install it there and it's gonna support the glove box and this hose up and that's gonna be it for this project. All right, the bracket is installed as well. So now what's left here is to install the radio and the two gauges there and we're done with the dash. Whew. Right, I started installing these gauges and the speedometer is on already. The tachometer, I started installing it and I realized that it needs to have the oil pressure light. And they never run that. And I came here to see if they hooked up the switch. And of course, the switch is not hooked up. So, we need to run our own wires for that now. Oh my god. All right, everything is assembled and we have oil pressure light that comes on together with the ignition. The problem is though that I have the <laughs> that I have the two wires here shortened in order for the light to come on because the switch down there is not working. Normally in when the engine is off and there's no pressure, there must be two terminals that are closed. We should have continuity through them but we don't have none of these three terminals see each other right now. So it looks like the switch is bad. So anyways, the wiring is here. We just need to find a new switch for, for there. So this is the, the switch for the oil pressure, low pressure warning light, and also for the anti run on valve there, which is not hooked up. It's not part of the system anymore. The whole system has been disconnected, which is a good thing. So anyways, the dash is assembled. Last thing is the radio. Oh my God, this is taking so much longer than I expected. All right, the radio is installed as well. And the speakers, actually, I haven't showed you that, but it has a nice little amplifier over there. So it has quite a sound. Um, also, let me see the inside. So when you turn it on, the radio, when I plugged it in, it believed that it is January 1st, 2012, which means it's like 11 years old radio, but it does have Bluetooth, so you can hook up your phone. I already did, but I'm filming with my phone, so I can't show you exactly. But also it has USBs at the back. It's impressive for a 2012 radio and i just uh, run an extension from behind and i put it out there so the owner can charge his phone but he can also actually play music from it uh, i have the same i have similar one in my spitfire with usb doesn't have bluetooth though so i always have to plug my phone if i want to play music but um, that's better because it's always charging my phone right <laughs> So I have a permanent wire run to my uh, ashtray here because on my Spitfire, the distance from here to the glass is actually perfect for my phone. So I put my phone like this and it stands no problem. I don't even need a per, uh, phone holder. And then the cable that is sticking out permanently from here, I just connect to my phone and I play music. So I don't want to play anything, maybe for a second. Let's go to radio for a few seconds. Enough. 
<laughs> and it has two USBs actually. So one is connected to this one, but when they unplug the thing, it's kind of hidden here. So that's the owner, that's, I found this under the seat. So he was already using it. And the other side as well, nice and clean now, no wires hanging. So wiring done, let's turn the ignition off. All this time the ignition coil has been disconnected and the electronic ignition because the car has electronic ignition. So we didn't ruin anything, don't worry. All right, um, I'm almost done inside. Actually, I found this uh, strap for the glove box I found. For I found it in the boot, so we're going to install that as well. And then we're going to take a break from interior because I'm sick and tired. Later, we're going to have to come back and replace these gaskets on the door jams. We have to replace these seals here. You know, these are fun. So we're going to do that later. I'm going to do something more mechanical because I'm, I'm tired of laying under the dash and uh, on my back and following wires and wiring diagrams. So I'm probably gonna change the rear springs in the next episode. But anyways, that's gonna be it for this one. So I hope it wasn't too boring. It was mostly updates. There was not much action in it, but uh, it is what it is. I just wanted to show you what this wiring harness looks like, the advanced out wire. It's a very good idea and I believe it's a nicely done wiring harness but you have to install it properly if you don't install it properly there's no point of it so anyways guys thanks for watching thanks for commenting and subscribing thanks for sharing and supporting the channel and i'll see you in the next episode probably of this one or maybe something else we will see thanks again guys bye